Hey guys, and welcome back to part 7 of my new series, All About the Planet. For the uninitiated, every day I cover a different planet in our solar system, going by distance from the sun, though it will exclude Earth and replace it with Pluto. In today's episode, I will be covering the windiest and most distant planet from the sun, Neptune. Now before we get into the fringes of the solar system, I would appreciate you like the video, subscribe to your channel, and hit the notification bell so you stay tuned for future content. Okay. So what is Neptune like? Well, it's not an idyllic beach resort. Far from it. Temperatures are a mind-numbing negative 330 degrees Fahrenheit, or negative 200 degrees Celsius. Not as cold as Uranus, but still far too cold for human survival. The reason it's warmer than Uranus is something I covered in the last episode, but I'll cover it again just in case. You need a refresher. While Uranus is a very pale blue, Neptune is a darker purple. Since purple absorbs more, much more light than white blue, it in turn absorbs more heat. Huh? So Neptune is a little warmer than it would be otherwise. The planet is very far from the sun, about 30 times further away than Earth, huh? making it the most distant, officially recognized planet in our solar system. Neptune is also extremely windy. Wind speeds exceed 1200 miles per hour, or 2,000 kilometers per hour in its upper atmosphere, and that's eight times faster than a Category 5 hurricane on Earth. So good luck making stable floating cities. Neptune also rotates reasonably fast, so making one spin on its axis every 16 hours or so. Neptune is also the smallest gas giant, being only about four times the size of Earth. Unlike Uranus, Neptune has some notable weather phenomena that give its surface at least some visual appeal. One interesting case is that of the Great Dark Spot. In 1989, Voyager 2 swung by the planet and snapped the highest resolution picture of Neptune to date, and, and it was a large purple blob in the southern hemisphere, which scientists called the Great Dark Spot. However, it seems to have been a temporary phenomena, as in 1994, the Hubble Space Telescope snapped a picture of Neptune, and the Great Dark Spot was gone. Okay, so what else is there about Neptune? Well, it has 27 confirmed moons today, similar to Uranus. However, while Uranus has a slew of medium-sized moons orbiting it, Neptune only has one big moon and more than two dozen smaller moons. That big moon, which is called Triton, is about four-fifths the diameter of our own moon. The weird thing is, Triton is orbiting the opposite way than it's supposed to. Normally, Moons orbit a planet in the same direction that the planet is rotating at. Oh, uh, none. However, Triton is orbiting in the opposite direction of Neptune's rotation, so it has a so-called retrograde orbit. Because of this, many scientists believe that Triton was formerly a Kuiper Belt dwarf planet that wandered into Neptune's gravitational influence and promptly started to orbit it. In about 3.5 billion years, Triton will spiral below the point where tidal forces begin to tear a moon apart, and this will give Neptune rings akin to Saturn today for a few hundred million years. Neptune actually has rings now, as do most of the gas giants, but with the exception of Saturn, they're all very faint and were only discovered by passing spacecraft. And that wraps up this video about Neptune. Stay tuned for the series finale tomorrow, featuring everyone's favorite planet slash dwarf planet, Pluto. And as always, I would appreciate you like the video. Subscribe to your channel and hit the notification bell to stay tuned for future content. Thanks and have a great rest of your day.